Hello? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just getting in the car right now. I'll come pick you up. What? You can't go this week. No? All right, I'll try it out. Comment, like, subscribe, repeat. How you doing guys? Mario from Hashtag Sports. You knew that. You're watching the channel. Paul is going to be MIA today, so I'm going to have to try to fly solo. Figured, why don't we do a rapid fire Q&A? Michael Goodman, you guys should do a Q&A for a thousand subs when you get there. We're going to do a Q&A right now, brother. Ultimate Guitar Wizard, uh, did you guys forget about Keith Ford? Yep. I love this game, Buffalo Bills football. Are we the Oakland A's of the NFL? You know what? I made a comment about this. The first thing that happened when we signed Feliciano and Niseki was, it seems like McDermott and Bean are playing a little bit of money ball. It really does seem that, okay, let everyone spend for all of these other guys. Let everyone just spend all this money, try to get these top notch free agents. You know, we're gonna get controllable contracts. We're gonna get guys that fit into our system at a reasonable price, and we're gonna win games. Well, how do you win games? You gotta score points. Well, how do you score points? You have to have a front line that blocks for your quarterback. You have to have wide receivers that get open. You have to have running backs that are able to pick up a blitz and hit the hole that you call the play to. I mean, it just seems like that, se that, that seems like to be the pattern that's going on with these guys. For the two years now, what they've been doing is they've been getting very controllable contracts. I mean, they had to clear out the shelf last year with the $50 million in dead cap, which allowed them to you know, go go after some guys and still have cap room to roll over into next year. And you know what? They didn't spend all their money. They didn't go for broke. And they could still put together right now a winning football team that can score points. Jake Viveros. Is that a van or a station wagon or an SUV? SUV. Next one, Dirty Randy. If any of you have seen the league, that's, that's the most hilarious name you'll ever see. Great video as always, guys. Have you heard any rumblings about the Chiefs trading Tyree Kill? I'd like to hear what you think about his possible fit with Buffalo. Let me just put it out there. Tyree Kill fits in every single offense in the NFL, in the CFL, in the <laughs> college, anywhere, anywhere you want to put semi-pro. You want to put Tyree Kill in any kind of offense, you can fit in any kind of offense. I don't know what kind of off the field things that this guy will bring that McDermott is willing to uh, have in his locker room as far as his quote unquote culture. Uh, we're not really sure what, what the ending is going to be for Tyreek Hill, but as far as a on the field talent, undeniable, unbelievable. Uh, but as far as what kind of culture they're they're preaching here in in, uh, in the Bills organization and what they want to try to do, I'm not really sure if Tyreek Hill is in the cards. There's probably going to be a much much bigger suitors for him. Uh, you know, I don't think he'll want to go from the Kansas City Chiefs to the Buffalo Bills. I'm just speaking. I'm, I don't know the man. I don't know. But I'm sure there will be a lot of money thrown for his services. Al can't win. Haven't watched his video yet, so I don't know if you bring him up or not. You guys know who I would love to go after as an apparent for Shady? Duke Johnson. I love the Duke Johnson signing. I love how versatile he is. He's a pass catching back. He can run. He can he can run everywhere around the field. He can break open any type of run. The only thing I think the Browns will hold on to him, given the recent news that Kareem Hunt will be facing an eight-game suspension. A lot of running back. A lot of teams right now will have their running backs go three deep. I know that sounds weird, um, but they will, in lieu of trying to get a guy that's run down. Um, and near the, you know, you're starting to get into uh, November, December. You need your running backs to be fresh. They're starting to go with a three-man rotation. Uh, you're starting to see that all around the league right now. Uh, teams that still carry two backs as, as that take a majority of their carries, you start to see their numbers decline near the end of the year. So, I mean, I love Duke Johnson, the player. I love the, the, if the Bills would take a run at him. I just don't think the Cleveland Browns are going to be letting go of him anytime soon. Coming in next, Matthew Ronkowski. 
what is your starting five pre-draft and before we add any, any more free agent offensive linemen? I think it's absolutely hysterical that the Buffalo Bills were already a top-flight defense. Now you get an offensive lineman from the Jets and you get an offensive lineman from the Patriots. Hilarious. That being said, if you want to think about what would my starting five be? Well, I'm kind of biased to the fact that I know a lot of people won't agree with this. I would love for them to get a tackle to move uh, Deion Dawkins down to guard. I think Dawkins would be a heck of a guard. I think he'd be an all pro if you put him at guard. Uh, but it doesn't seem like that's that's the route that this uh, coaching staff wants to go. They want to definitely insert Dawkins as your tackle. So I, you know what, I'll go along with them. If Dawkins is my tackle, then Dawkins is my tackle. That's what I'm going to start doing. Uh, so I'm going to have Dawkins as my left tackle, uh, Feliciano at left guard. we got Morris in the middle. you probably put Long at right guard. And at your right tackle, you put uh, Ty Naseki. All right. So that's probably what you're going to have. A lot of humanity up front with all of those guys. I think the smallest one might be six foot four. So that being said, you're going to have a completely rebuilt, revamped line for Josh Allen, those running backs, to, to have some fun. All right. Hopefully the Buffalo Bills will be able to start scoring points next year, and hopefully they've gained enough weapons uh, to do so. All right, John Calvin coming in next. Hold on to your pants. With the ninth overall pick, the Buffalo Bills select Josh Jacobs. Josh, Josh Jacobs has ties to the OC. Team player, excellent blocker, good pass catcher. Power and decently elusive back. Okay, could he have a better mentor than Ivory and Gore? You know, it's funny because the – the the, informa- the the tape that I've watched on him, I've watched so much so much tape on him. Uh, it, it's it's scary. Um, you know, it's interesting about Jacobs is that uh, a lot of people are down on him for his forty time. You know, oh, he ran a four six forty, he ran a four six forty in his pro day. Oh my God, what's going to happen? Uh, Fifteen years ago, Frank Gore ran a four five eight at the combine. So, mm, guy's been playing for fifteen years. So, I, could he have a better mentor than Gore? It, the way that he runs, he runs like Gore. I mean, if you go back and look at tapes of Gore and you look at tapes of Josh Jacobs right now, they run very similar. They're one-cut guys that get upfield, can make a couple guys miss, and can run over a few guys. It it seems like a, like a fit. Like That would be a fit for them to pick up Jacobs. With the, ni- the ninth overall pick is a little high for me. He does have ties. Uh, the type of running back that it seems like they're going to that they're looking for in this offense is a power bruising back, and and Jacobs could be that back for them. Uh, and the great part about it is he doesn't have to play right away. One of the things that we've seen about a lot of running backs that come into the league now is that they burn out around week thirteen, week twelve, week thirteen is because they're not used to playing that many games. Uh, they have to get acclimated to the pro schedule. They have to get acclimated to playing professionally. Now this is their job. Uh, they got. They have to go move to a new city. They have an agent. They have all this nonsense they got. They got to deal with. It's tough for them. So they end up getting burnt out pretty pretty quickly. The one thing that you saw with Alvin Kamara was Sean Payton knew this. So with, uh, two years ago when Alvin Kamara first started, he he didn't play the first four weeks. So then he was fresh near the end of the year. He got acclimated to the offseason schedule and he was able to come in. He was able to be very very effective last year. Uh, that's one of those things that the teams are really starting to do now. They're starting to pick up these running backs, and they don't play them right away. That's the smartest thing. Or if they do play them right away, they're in spot duty. They're here and there. They're, they're just kind of doing a few things. But the thing about Josh Jacobs, he does definitely fit in your offense. He's definitely a younger version. And you got to realize this, too. Ivory, McCoy, and Gore, their contracts are up at the end of this year. So none of them could conceivably be on this team next year. So the Bills are obviously in play for running back for the 2019 draft. John Roberts coming in from our uh, the one video we talked about with the jersey numbers. Zay Jones wore number 11. Or where's number 11? That jersey, man. That jersey is just cursed in Buffalo. It just is. Just, Zay, pick a different one. Pick a different one. No. Rob Johnson, Scott Norwood. It's just Roscoe Parrish, Drew Bledsoe. That even hurts me to say that. I mean, come on, come on. Jacob Moldovan coming in hot. Mario's a Red Sox fan, considering unsubscribing at this point. Thought we were Buffalo fans around here. Whoa, whoa. Do not make that mistake. Do not make that mistake. I am not a Boston Red Sox fan. If you happen to harken back to the Christmas episode, I'll let you just, here's a little preview of that. 
And I also bought him a shirt with the Golden Girls on it. Now, listen, I always like to get Mario the most random things, right? I got him a Bobby Boucher football jersey. Like, I like to get him the most random stuff. I absolutely cannot wait till he opens up this, uh, this Golden Girls shirt because Blanche and the girls are right on it. So I'm very excited. So, if it is just as likely that my best friend would buy me a Golden Girls shirt, why is it so unbelievable that me knowing that he's such a diehard Yankees fan, why wouldn't I invest a few bucks in a Boston Red Sox hat just for the sole purpose of pissing him off? You know what? It worked. Mission accomplished. Brian Klein coming in. Losers should have to sign, uh, sing the Bills shout song in the middle of the mall when it's packed. He said sign. You mean sing or sign? Because both of those are equally hilarious. And unfortunately for you, one of those has already been done. I think I may have in my early 20s ran through the mall and sang the Bill's shout song. But hey, I'll do it again. Next one, JC. Don't you think it's obvious we are just going to be running some variation of the college spread option a la Tebow or RG3? Allen runs will be more from scrambling than the design, but all these receivers and running backs can catch. It seems likely we are just going to spread the field and make a def the defense pick between defending the entire field or the quarterback says run, running back swing, and screen passes. It is very interesting to see some of the dynamics that has been going on with the Buffalo Bills. You get Tyler Croft. You get a mostly, I mean, he's a pass-catching tight end, but he's mostly used in the box. You end up signing Jake Fisher, who's going to transfer to the tight end, who's 6'6", 280. You start talking about signing Brown, Beasley, you got Jones, you got Foster, you got McKenzie. You got all these nice new weapons in there for the Bills to use. And then you have Shady who can catch the ball out of the backfield. Hasn't really done that very much in the last uh, last year or two. However, thinking about it, you have Chris Ivory who can catch the ball out of the backfield, doesn't really do it so. But then you, you get Frank Gore who wasn't really known for his pass catching abilities. Now either the Bills are going to draft a running back that can catch the ball out of the backfield or they're going to go more a la you know, we're going to shove the ball down your throat 35 times a game, and then, you know, Allen's going to end up hitting you over the top because he's such a good play-action passer. So that could be one of the routes that the Bills are going to try to go. Jets talk 24-7 coming in. I think this definitely sparks an arms raise between our two teams, Similarity, similarly to what we saw last in last year's draft. Yes, it does. It seems like the Jets and Bills are jockeying a little bit for the lead in the division, although, you know, it's got to be said, Patriots are still, until we knock them off the mountain, whether it's the Dolphins, the Jets, or the Bills, whether or not one of those three teams knocks the Patriots off the mountain, they are still the top of the mountain right now. Uh, as, as painful it is, as a Bills fan it is to say that, that's what the, that's the reality of the situation. They are still up there. They have a 95-year-old uh, you know, coach and a 75-year-old quarterback, and they're still winning games. That's just, that's just the reality of the situation. But it seems like I haven't seen this much uh, – this much happen when within the division uh, since when the Dolphins drafted Marino and the Bills drafted Kelly, you had two young gun quarterbacks going to be playing against each other for the next 10 to 15 years. Hopefully, that's that's the case. And Allen is able to get us over the you know, over the hump, and the Bills are able to be successful. And it seems like that formula hopefully will stick. Got one from Dave Thomas. I'm not really sure if this is the Wendy's Dave Thomas, but Dave Thomas nonetheless. I don't know that Zay makes the roster, even if he gets the chance. Brown Beasley and our best rookie wide receivers since Sammy, a potential draft pick. Pro Bowl returner McKenzie at least can make the case. Not sure average for four games sells the front office. Not this year, at least. Yeah, Zay is a uh, – the only good thing about Zay is that you got two years left on his deal. He was a second-round pick. They have a very controllable contract for the next two years to see if he actually will pan out. He's one of the first draft picks, uh, technically the second draft pick of this regime. They tend to try to hold on to their guys a little bit longer than that, as you can see. So maybe Zay will stay for a little bit longer, but if his production doesn't rise, I do uh, I do agree. If uh, Cole Beasley ends up having about 30 more catches than him this year, they might be questioning their draft pick. It's Josh. You guys are growing super fast all of a sudden. Congrats. No, Josh. We cannot, and it can't be uh, stated enough. We cannot thank all of you guys.
Okay, all the subscribers. Paul will echo this the same thing. Right, Paul? Paul will echo the same thing. You guys are the reason this channel is what it is. If it wasn't for you guys commenting, liking, enjoying the stuff that we put out, we wouldn't do it. Um, we're, we're so we're so thrilled and humbled to be um, to do this stuff on a weekly basis and to put out content talking about the team that we cheer for and uh, that we've all suffered through for many years uh, and cheered for just the same. Um, we guys, we can't thank you guys enough. We're so happy you guys enjoy our content. And, uh, you know, thanks for riding with us.